So Urdu started somewhere in Delhi, but then it spread very quickly. So if you now go to Malaysia, you will find Urdu speaking or at least someone who would understand Urdu at any shop because a lot of Indian diaspora is in Malaysia. Same thing with Singapore. Same thing with the Arab world. Same thing with, of all the places, South Africa, you know, Zimbabwe, uh, Nigeria. And then after the Second World War, scores of Pakistanis have gone into European worlds. So now England is a very big market of Urdu population. And then since the 40s and 50s, ever since the Pakistanis and Indians started coming to US, they have founded these languages in the universities. When Indus started, my kids were four years old, two years old, right? At that age. There's an interesting story behind it because I was looking for those exact books that you're talking about, right? So somebody or someone should have brought some books from Pakistan that I can just get and I'll, you know, start to teach them. And I'm not alone in that. There have been a score of parents who with young kids and they're trying to teach them this language by bringing books from Pakistan. So when that didn't work out, I started looking for a teacher. So I met this teacher in 2012. Her name is Nazma Rahman. And she handed me a five course set of books. So she was like, Shahid, I'm just here for a vacation. I didn't know. But if you want some help, these are the books that I published many, many years ago. Why don't you start with these? So at that time, I had no clue about language, right? Because I come from project management, business background, right? So I don't have linguistics is not my area, uh, even though I'm in it for the last 10, 12 years. Around that time, we, we, all, we also started doing Urdu stories. So we will go to different libraries like the one by our house on the west side, uh, Sugarland Library, Pearland, Woodland, KT. So we did that tour of about two, three months. I think it was around summer in 2012 that we did lots of Urdu story times. So that's how a lot of people got to know Kichalubi. There is some effort, you know. But then again, it was just those story times. It was just like once a week, you know. Then uh, Sarah and a couple of her friends got together and they created the very first curriculum of how to teach. So we started a, we started a few efforts here and there, but then in 2000, late 2012, um, I got a call from a parent in Woodlands. And she said, I have heard about that you you wanted, you are trying to do some Urdu classes. So I have a few students and we have a place, but we don't have any books. We don't have any teachers. So then in a couple of months, um, I stumbled upon some very good teachers, Seema Lari, Rukaiya, and Aisha. In the fall of 2012 was the first time, or I think 2013, sorry, yeah, 2013 was the first time that we had an actual Urdu class, a weekly Urdu class with 17 or 18 kids. So that was the first time that in 2013, uh, people paid fees. We had registration done. We had proper books. We had a curriculum. We had teachers. Uh, the class was basically running just like any other language class was would run. There was a graduation at the end of the semester. Kids did performances and spoken Urdu and this and that. We had a field trip. So that one class ran from 2013 to all of 2013, basically. Right around 2013, um, we got to know of a federal grant that was given to community organizations, universities, and colleges for critical languages in America. So that grant was for Urdu, Hindi, Farsi, Arabic, Turkish, Russian, Chinese, you know, bunch of different languages, I think 12 or 13 different languages. So we applied for it and we got it. When we first got it, we were just surprised, you know, some, somebody has given us all this money to do something, but we don't know, right? Um, but with that came a lot of support also. So it was the run through University of Maryland and they gave us some training and 
we got the federal grant because we are a American non-profit organization. We were composed of Pakistani Americans, but we are a 501c3. We're tax exempt. We are also registered in the state of Virginia and Maryland. We have a chapter over there. We call it the DMV chapter. And we have already tried a very large class in California before the pandemic. I mean, at one time we had 72 students in one location. That one California location of 72 students was more than the seven locations in Houston at one time. As far as support coming from other countries, unfortunately not. But I will say that the Pakistani consulates and the embassies in the US, they have been very, very helpful. I mean, extremely helpful. This uh, consulate in the Houston area, um, in the last 10 years, I think we interacted with three council journals and they all have been very, very supportive of Indus Arts Council. So from, if we Pakistan, ki baat kare, so the Pakistani missions in America do help Indus Arts Council and the Urdu language and the culture and so on and so forth. They do their part. Um, but as such, no, I don't think the government, we have never asked the government of Pakistan for any help or support or government of India or anybody else. I think being an American organization, the U.S. offers enough for us to grow out of Texas and so on. I mean, we did all of this just being in the U.S., right? So you you see how that one search for a book for my son turned out to be a whole new, you know, effort. So then in 2014, two years after establishing this organization, when we got the grant, that's when we got to know Urdu in America on a national scale. Because University of Maryland would take us twice a year on a national conference tour for seven long years. <laughs> we went to every university you can imagine, from uh, Seattle down to Florida and from California up to Boston, right? Um, and we got to know so many foreign language departments. We got to know so many professors, so many linguists, so many pedagogists, um, just writers, poets, educationists, intellectuals, you know. So those seven years from 2014 to 2021, um, we just got immersed into how to teach a foreign language in America, you know? Um, and then every year, our team was increasing. New people came, new teachers 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 came. So then, that's how we realized that we're not just teaching language, we are also training people to teach language. So teacher trainers came out of this whole seven, eight years of work also. Um, first, we didn't know how to do a curriculum. Now we are capable of doing our own curriculums, you know. First, we didn't know how to train. Now we are teacher trainers, you know. So so a lot happened in these last 10 years. Uh, and then the groundwork in the community, at least in the Houston area in the last 10 years, we have been able to change the tide. That now people are paying to learn Urdu and we don't do free Urdu classes. Uh, just maybe like a one hour class, we will give you free. Mein. But um, we wanted to save Urdu from that charitable category. <laughs> uh, so just as you spend money and you give value to any other skill, Urdu is also a skill. If you want to learn it, there's a price for it, right? Or when you pay for something, you value it. Um, I still remember in 2013, uh, somebody invited me to a radio station. And they said, well, this is Mr. Shahid, and he Urdu classes, so who would, you know, come to his classes? So I think six people called in, and everybody said no. What's the point of learning Urdu? This is 2012, 2013. We're already in America. We need to learn English. We need to learn other languages. We already know Urdu. What's the point of learning Urdu? So, you know, I was very disheartened that I went to the radio station and six callers called in and everybody said no. 
but then I, I was like, I, it didn't, it didn't matter to me a whole lot because I still had two kids to teach, right? We look at language as a threat. We don't look at language as an opportunity. I mean, Thomas Jefferson knew three or four languages. So all your diplomats that represent your countries, they know different languages, right? That's how wars can stop if you understand the other person. <laughs> so languages are critical. All these scientists and, you know, famous people that we know, at least spoke three or four different languages, right? Einstein knew more than one language. Did that make him less of an Einstein? No. So I, I think the, the perspective got changed, I don't know when, maybe in the postmodern era, but that doesn't erase the entire human history of the word bazaar being on a magazine in America. There's a Harper Bazaar magazine in America, which has the word bazaar in it, which is an Urdu and Farsi word. It's a skill set. And it never takes away from what you know. If you know Spanish and you learn English, you're not going to forget Spanish, right? <laughs> so, uh, so it, and I think it also opens so much in your mental capacity that uh, you become more understanding, you become more humble, you become more diplomatic, you become more tactful, you can read body language better if you understand their language uh, and if you understand their culture, you can do business with them, right? So in my perspective, it only adds. Like now, if you're talking about films, right? Because I think you and I know each other from this side of the world. Sometimes I do write in English first and then translate myself into Urdu. Or sometimes I do write some subject matter in Urdu and then translate into English. It adds to your personality. It adds to your um, persona. And I don't think it will take anything away from anybody. Think, I think we log usko bahut dafa underestimate karte hain. Urdu always ranks in the in the most spoken category in the world. Urdu ranks in the top ten alone. If it is just Urdu, Urdu. If you combine it with Hindi, then it's at five or fourth rank in the most spoken and most understood language. If you look at the Indus logo, it it has two eyes looking at you, right? So I think I consider those as one eye of the technology and one eye of the intellect. So I think Indus Arts Council has both of these elements into it. If you have the language skill, you can intelligently think in that language, in that culture, in that uh, space. But if you don't have that, if, you ju if you're just like a mono-language person who speaks just one hi language when he talks about one language, then he will think that the limit of language is limitation. Hai. So if I know Urdu, Spanish and English, I now, my, my canvas has now tripled, right? I can think from a taco to Nihari to a burger. Yeah. There are more Indian poets who do poetry in Urdu than even Pakistanis, just by the sheer number of them, right? Because in India, I think, and I know for a fact, there are more, um, there are more Urdu speakers, there are more, uh, the Bollywood industry is filled with, you know, elements of Urdu. Um, in the 70s and 80s, the film titles and credits were in Urdu and English and Hindi. Uh, now, for whatever political reasons, wo Urdu mein nahi hote, Hindi or uh, English mein hote hai. But even with all those um, oppressive government efforts or the change in society, whatever it is in India, it has not been able to erase Urdu. Urdu, I believe, from India, Pakistan, the subcontinent, is one thing that you just cannot erase, no matter how you how much you try. Uh, because the funny thing is that many people don't give Urdu a little bit of Urdu, they say that Urdu is dying. 
تو آپ اردو میں ہی کہہ رہے ہیں کہ اردو مر رہی ہے تو آپ یہ بھی نہیں کہہ رہے کہ اردو از اے ڈائنگ لینگویج آپ اردو میں ہی کہہ رہے ہیں کہ اردو مر رہی ہے تو تو دیز آئی تھنک جو پوسٹ ماڈرن ورلڈ ہے نا اور جو ٹیکنالوجی ہے اس نے آئی تھنک ہماری ایک آنکھ بند کر دی ہے جو ہماری انٹلیکٹ کی آنکھ ہے وہ بند ہو گئی اس کی وجہ سے تو ہم کو جب وہ ٹیکنالوجی نظر آتی ہے تو ساتھ میں اس کی انٹلیکٹ نظر نہیں آتا مے بی آئی ایم این آپٹمسٹک پرسن بٹ آئی ڈو سی اردو ہیز اے ویری برائٹ فیوچر ان امیرکا نمبر ون اٹ از آلریڈی ان دا یونیورسٹیز نمبر ٹو آر ریجن آف انڈیا اینڈ پاکستان از بیکمنگ مور اینڈ مور پارٹ آف دا ورلڈ ویدر تھرو اکانمی اور اور یو نو موویز اور یو نو آرٹ فارمس اور وٹ ایور سٹی آف ہیوسٹن کین گیو یو اے واٹر بل ان اردو لینگویج your in- your health insurance company can give you an explanation of your benefits in urdu if you ask for it the corporations understand the value uh, everybody else does i think is just jo hamara diaspora hai uske zehno mein i think thodi bahutein abhi clear nahi hai kuch baatein but jis tarah se bahut se logon ke zehn mein clear ho gayi last 10 saalon mein i think aage 10 20 saalon mein ho jayenge so based on all these things i feel very confident that Uh, Urdu has a very bright future in America. Uh, there are more Urdu speaking or Urdu understanding actors and actresses coming into Hollywood. Okay, there are more, I mean, compared to 20 years ago, at least we can say there are more productions now, right? Um, in politics, there are more people of color coming into politics, right? So they understand more than one language. Uh, whether it's in the governorship, whether it's in mayoral uh, elections or local elections or state or federal. Um, so I don't think we should think that there is no Urdu limitation. Urdu is competing among every other language in the world. If somebody has a need, they will come and learn the language. People who already know the language should feel very proud and should feel very confident that uh, that they can talk in more than one language. I mean, companies value that. My company does. If I tell my company that I speak four languages, there is a value to it, right? They know that the person has more capacity to think. The person can listen to diverse opinions and not react abnormally, <laughs> right? So... Uh, you get empathy right you get you get to feel other person's culture or their religion or their if they want to take a day on holy you understand what holy is right if they want to take a day off on uh, some other thing you you would understand it better and rather than as their manager you won't be mad at them right um so i think all in all from a societal perspective from economical perspective from educational perspective from governance industry entertainment i think urdu has its place um, and we all have to take a lot of pride into the fact that hum log ek aisi zuban bolte hain jo duniya mein billions of log samajhte hain theek hai na so hame usko itna halka nahi lena chahiye